Hello, and welcome to the Growing Our Family podcast, Pregnancy Edition, where we'll discuss topics ranging from your very first positive test all the way through delivery. I'm your host, Brittany, and I'm a new mom to a beautiful baby boy. Throughout my pregnancy, I did hours of research on everything that came my way. Join me on a weekly chat where I'll share my knowledge and personal experiences with all of you. You are listening to episode 9, the first trimester. So you're pregnant, now what? This is a guide to everything you need to know in the first trimester. What to do, what not to do, and tips to make it to that 12-week mark. The first trimester actually begins on the first day of your last period, also known as your LMP, which stands for your last menstrual period. This means that by the time you actually find out you're pregnant, the first trimester is already a third or even halfway over. So how is my baby and body developing during this time period? Even though you can't see any changes yet, a lot is happening. During the first 12 weeks, so much is going on, and I listed out the major milestones for each week for you. So weeks one to two, you actually don't have a baby yet. You're just now getting ready to ovulate. Weeks three, you have an embryo. Yay! It's not quite a fetus yet as it's still just a bunch of cells multiplying to create that precious little baby, but you're getting there and you are now technically pregnant. Week four, your baby is on its way to your uterus where it'll spend the next 37 weeks, give or take. Some women still don't know they're pregnant for another couple of weeks, so keep an eye out for PMS symptoms like feeling bloated or crampy, and you might have some mood swings. But don't worry if you don't experience any of this. Some women don't have any symptoms at all. Also, some women will experience implantation bleeding, but don't worry about this either. It's totally normal. Your little embryo will split into two parts. One becomes the placenta, and the other will become your son or daughter. Week 5. By now, you have missed your period and should be far enough along to confirm the pregnancy using a standard test. You don't need to spend a fortune on pregnancy tests. I used the Dollar Tree ones and they worked perfectly. If it's hard to read the line, then you can go out and buy one of those fancy digital ones. If it comes back negative, wait a few days to a week and then try again. The first time I took the test, it came back negative. By now, your placenta is starting to form. This is baby's lifeline for his or her stay inside your belly. It provides your baby with all of the oxygen and nutrients that they need, and it helps remove waste from your baby's bloodstream. This is what the umbilical cord attaches to. It's common for some women to experience early pregnancy symptoms, but some women don't experience any at all, so don't worry if you're feeling fine and just enjoy this time. Some common symptoms are exhaustion, sore boobs, or even a little bit of nausea. Although you may not see a lot going on from the outside, your body is working hard to grow this baby. Now is a great time to start documenting your pregnancy. It goes by so quickly and you'll be grateful to have notes to look back on. I started a Microsoft Word document and would go in once a week to talk about the milestones, appointments, and how I was feeling. Week 6. This week, your baby is starting to develop some major organs like kidneys, liver, lungs, and a little heart. Their tiny baby heart is already beating at 110 beats per minute and will continue to get faster. You may be visiting the bathroom often. By six weeks, I was practically living on the toilet. This is a combination of a few things. The pregnancy hormone, HCG, increases the blood flow to your pelvic area, your kidney knees are working hard to get rid of any waste, and your little one is starting to push on your bladder. Luckily, the uterus lifts up slightly during the second trimester, but you'll be back to the toilet during the third. Prepare for your first prenatal visit by deciding which route you want to take for your prenatal care. Check out my post on OBGYNs or midwives if you aren't sure yet what you want to do. Week 7. Your baby's umbilical cord is developed. This will be their lifeline for the next 33 weeks. Little buds will appear where their limbs will start to grow, and your boobs will start to change as they prepare for your new baby's arrival. 
They'll start to get bigger, your nipples will get pointier, and your areola will get darker, which helps your baby see them after birth, and this just makes for a better and easier time for them to latch. Some common symptoms at this point are breast tenderness, fatigue, constant urination, cravings or aversions, heartburn, or even a little extra saliva. Don't be concerned if you find yourself drooling. It's totally normal. Week 8. Baby's heartbeat is now up to 150 to 170 beats per minute, which is about as twice as fast as mine and yours. Amniotic fluid is increasing and your uterus is getting bigger. Some first-time moms may feel like they're starting to show by now, but unfortunately it's most likely just some bloating. In either case, if your pants might be starting to get a little tight, You can check out my review of the Bella Band so you can start leaving your pants unbuttoned. It's a lifesaver, and I pretty much wore it every day for my entire pregnancy after my bloating started. Morning sickness can start to come into full force and is experienced by three out of four pregnant women. Whoever created this term is a huge liar because morning sickness does not just exist in the mornings. If you aren't feeling so great, try switching up the time that you take your prenatal vitamins and try keeping a few crackers by your bed. It can help to eat multiple small meals throughout the day so you're never starving but you're never super full either. I had my first appointment at 8 weeks, so don't be shocked when the ultrasound machine doesn't look like the one in the movies. Early on, a lot of doctors will use a transvaginal ultrasound, which looks like a little wand and it goes inside of you instead of the typical one that goes on your belly. Most people suggest to wait until after the first trimester to start sharing the exciting news, but I just could not wait. I'm a fairly open person, so I would want my friends and family there for us if anything had happened. Do whatever you think is the best decision for your family and don't let others pressure you into a decision you aren't comfortable with. This is your big news and you get to share it whenever you're comfortable. Week 9. Although you won't be able to feel any movement for a few more weeks, baby is already starting to make tiny arms and leg twitches as their muscles start to develop. Curious about the gender? You can actually take the sneak peek test on Amazon to find out if you're having a little boy or girl. Although it's accurate starting at eight weeks, I waited until nine weeks just in case. You can read a little bit more about my review and experience on my blog, or that is today's product review if you just listen in till the end of the episode. If you weren't feeling tired before, you might be now. If you're dragging your feet, just know that you should have a break soon. Once your placenta is done developing, you should have a little bit more energy. If you've been feeling some heartburn, you can try a couple of these tips. First, eat small, frequent meals. You can also try to avoid any spicy or greasy food. And if those don't work, try taking antacids like Tums. The extra calcium helps and you need it anyway during your pregnancy. If you don't feel like taking antacids and you want to try a more natural route, you can also try drinking milk or almond milk for the extra calcium. I pretty much drank a gallon of milk almost every week to every two weeks during my pregnancy. I was obsessed with it, and I'm not a big milk drinker. If none of these tips work, talk to your doctor. They'll be able to prescribe some more efficient medications, and they are totally safe for both you and baby. Week 10. Your baby is no longer considered an embryo and is now considered a fetus. Remember when I said you need some extra calcium? Well, this week, all that extra calcium is helping out with the development of baby's bones. His or her teeth are also starting to form under the gums, but they won't make an appearance until they're about six months old. At this point, you might be starting to show. Your baby is now big enough that you might be able to see a slight bump in your lower belly. For me, it just kind of looked like I ate too many tacos, but every woman's different, and if you are skinnier to begin with, it might show a little bit more. If you aren't showing yet, don't worry. You will soon enough. You might have some added symptoms this week as well. The first could be round ligament pain, and this is caused by the stretching of ligaments supporting your belly. 
As your belly starts to get bigger, you might feel either a dull or even sharp or shooting pains in the bottom of your belly, but don't worry, it's totally normal. The second symptom is caused by the increase in blood flow. You might be able to see your veins now. Weird, but this is also completely normal. When you're pregnant, your body has about 150% of its normal blood volume, and this is what makes your veins stand out a little bit more. So week 11, your baby's webbing between his or her fingers and toes are disappearing. They are now looking a little less like a tadpole and a little more like a baby. Baby is now able to move around a little bit more inside your belly, and as they start to get bigger, you will start to feel these movements. Hopefully, you don't have much longer with the morning sickness, and the second trimester is right around the corner. This is considered to be the best trimester by most women, so just hang in there. Week 12, the end of the first trimester. Your baby has doubled in size in the past three weeks and is going to continue to grow like crazy. And this doesn't just stop after pregnancy. They grow so fast even after birth. Although the end of the first trimester doesn't necessarily mark the end of all these pregnancy symptoms, most women start to feel much better about now. If you are still feeling like poo, don't worry. The symptoms tend to go away as fast as they appeared, and one day you will hopefully wake up feeling so much better. I woke up one day and all of a sudden I no longer had any sort of nausea, I could use my normal toothpaste again, which, yes, I had an aversion to my mint toothpaste. I ended up having to buy a children's mango orange toothpaste because that's the only thing I could manage while I was brushing my teeth. It was a little ridiculous, but you got to do what you got to do during your pregnancy. If you didn't get a chance to hear your baby's heartbeat at the last appointment, you should be able to hear it at this month's appointment. Another great thing about the end of the first trimester you have to pee less. As your uterus moves upwards, it releases the pressure on your bladder. Enjoy this time because by the third trimester, the baby will be so large that that pressure is right back on your bladder. And this is accompanied by movements and kicks and rolls and somersaults. And don't be surprised if you end up peeing your pants, which sounds gross now, but any woman who's managed to make it all the way through their pregnancy without peeing their pants is... A superhero, and I would like to know what their tips are. You are now a third of the way through your pregnancy. Have you started logging it yet? The days will go by slowly, but the months go by so quickly, and soon enough you will be holding that little bundle of joy in your arms. If you haven't announced your pregnancy yet, the chances of miscarriage have greatly decreased by now, and this is a very common time for couples to announce the newest member of their family. As your baby starts to get larger, your rib cage gets bigger as well. Your underwire bras might start getting a little uncomfortable. I purchased nursing bras right around this time and they are so comfy. If you'd like to check them out, I will leave my review of them in the show notes so you can read through them and look at them on Amazon. They're extremely affordable and I love them so much. I've been wearing them, like I said, from like week 12 of my pregnancy and my baby is over six months old and I still wear the same exact ones. They're super awesome. Now's also a great time to start looking into baby registries. I have a full list that I will also link to on my show notes and this just kind of gives you a list of the top registries, the free items they'll send you, completion discounts, and other great perks. I was so glad to start my registry early so I could add all of the suggestions that came my way. Once you start showing, people love to suggest items that worked for them, which items to avoid, and the must-haves that they just couldn't live without. Your baby registry is a great place to create a list that you can go back through later and do research, make decisions, and if you don't want that product, you can always remove it. But it's just nice to have that list there because starting from scratch can get a little overwhelming. So this week I'm talking about the sneak peek test, and this is a DNA-based gender test. It has a 99% accuracy starting at 8 weeks. The way this test works is it looks for any Y chromosomes in your blood. Because you're a girl, you'll not have any unless your baby is a boy. Therefore, if they find any, 
it's a boy, and if they don't find any Y chromosomes, it's a girl. This is why it's so important to have your husband or boyfriend stay far away from you during the test, because we don't want any false results. So I do have some tips and steps to follow to make sure that you do get accurate results. So first, drink a glass of water 30 minutes before you start. It tells you this on the instructions inside of the box, which is a little dumb because if you don't end up reading it until you've already opened the box and started the whole process and then you have to like stop and then go get your water, drink it, wait 30 minutes and then go start again. So before you start to do it, chug a glass of water. It helps with the blood flow and finding your veins if you're hydrated. Number two, find a room that is not a bathroom and preferably somewhere your husband, boyfriend, or any guy does not hang out infrequently. Again, they tell you this on the instructions inside the box. So I went into our bathroom in our shared master suite, which was stupid on my part. I open up the box and I start reading the directions and it's like, do not do this in a bathroom. And I'm like, well, I already screwed this up. (laughs) So I boxed everything up. Luckily, I didn't undo any of the packaging yet. And I made sure to clean everything off with Clorox wipes before I actually opened up the packaging. Number three, do not remove the plastic wrap until you're about to start the test. This kind of seems self-explanatory, but if you get it in the mail and you're all excited and want to see what's in there, just don't. Um, Leave the plastic on until you're ready to do it. It makes it easier and less likely for it to get contaminated. Number four, wipe down everything. The counter, the outside of the box, the chair you're sitting in. If you want to spray Febreze around to get any particles out of the air, do it. I mean, you only really get one shot at this and you want to make sure that your results are accurate because it can be kind of frustrating if you get false results back. Number five, once you're in the room, the outside of the box and anything else you can think of is cleaned off. Now it's time to wash your hands. Find a sink that is closest to the testing site that you're using and leave all the doors open. You can't touch anything after you've washed up. You've watched some sort of doctor show, I know it. Grey's Anatomy fans, I am looking at you. Wash like you are going into surgery. Two minutes, warm soapy water, and they provide a brush to get under your nails. Scrub like a mad woman and don't use a towel. I forgot this and out of habit, I like dried off my hands with the towel right next to the sink and realized my mistake and had to do the whole washing process all over again. Number six, from here, just follow the instructions for how to do the rest of the test. The rest of it's pretty self-explanatory. You prick yourself on the side of the finger, you drip the blood into a little vial, and then you close it up. Just make sure that while you're doing this, your hand is below heart level. I made this mistake and I was sitting pretty low at the desk and I had my hand like dripping into the vial and it was literally not even, nothing was coming out. It took me like 10 minutes to get like two drops. And as soon as I realized what I was doing, I stood up. So my hand was below my heart and it just started flowing in there. So that's just a tip. If you're not getting much blood out, try that. Number seven, they provide you with everything you need to box it up and send it away. So once you're done, just follow the instructions. They do everything for you and it's really easy to send the test back in. You get the test in the mail, take the test, and then package it back up. They provide everything you need to box it back up and the shipping is already paid for, which is really nice. Once they receive your sample in the mail, you'll get an email. They start processing and you will have your results in 24 hours. You can also pay for the fast track option and get it back in eight hours. Worried about the accuracy? With 99% accuracy, that means 1% of the tests come back incorrect. Don't worry too much. They offer a full refund if the gender is wrong. I know quite a few moms who have taken the test and all of their results have come back correct so far. Looking at the reviews, it looks like the accuracy percentage is closer to 80% out of the 1,800 reviews on there. However, you never know if these people actually followed the instructions correctly. Also, most people who get inaccurate results will review the product with a negative review, whereas people who get positive, correct results are not as likely to go out of their way to leave a review. 
I always feel like there's more negative reviews than positive because if you get a positive test, you just move on. You're excited. You want to start shopping for baby. You forget to log on and leave the review. Most of the incorrect gender predictions say the baby is a boy when in reality it's a girl. This makes me think that there was some user error since the lab was able to pick up a Y chromosome in the sample. If you are truly worried about the results, you can hold off on purchasing non-refundable items until after your 20-week ultrasound to confirm. They will, res- they will send you the results via email, and they're actually pretty cool. It shows up in your email. It's like a little card that says, like, your results are in. And when you open up the email, you can click on the card, and it folds open, and it either says, congratulations, it's a boy, or congratulations, it's a girl. And it has a blue or a pink background, depending. So it's super cute. Um, I actually (laughs) could not wait. My husband and I knew that we were getting our results that day because we got the confirmation email the day before. So we had all these really cute plans to go out to dinner and we were going to order some food and he was going to get a glass of wine and because I can't drink, but I (laughs) could not wait. We got the results in and I called him while I was at work and we just did a one, two, three open on our phone because I literally couldn't even wait till lunchtime, let alone till the end of the day. This is how impatient I was. Hence why I needed to do the sneak peek because there is no way I was going to wait till the 20 week ultrasound to find out if I was having a little boy or girl. So that's it for this week. I want to thank all of you for joining us on the Growing Our Family Pregnancy Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, growingourfamily.com. That's growingourfamily.com to see today's show notes and product links. Also, don't forget to rate and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you download your podcast so you always get the latest episodes. If you love the show, the easiest way to support us is to actually click on any of the Amazon links I have in the show notes or within my blog posts. I am an Amazon affiliate, which means I do earn a very small percentage of anything you purchase through my links at no additional cost to you. So if you click on the link, Even if you don't end up buying that particular item, I still get a small kickback from anything you add to the cart within 24 hours of clicking. You definitely don't have to, but it is a great way to help support the show if you're enjoying the content. If you've had your baby or just want to learn more about life after delivery, check out the Growing Our Family Parenting Edition. Please join me next week for another episode.